Okay. Today we are talking about a very important topic in medicine generally and specifically for anesthetists. It is a blood transfusion and as you know, we are practically using blood transfusion in most of our daily working during anesthesia for those critical patients. And as the topic is so important, we have to know all the details of a blood transfusion. And so I divided the presentation into two parts. This is the first part, and the second part will be in the next week. B positive. It is not my blood group, neither my grade in math. It is my favorite quote. B positive. Why B positive? Because if any person not B positive, will lose a lot. For example, we are in very disaster situation now all over the world in uh, corona time, as you know, there are much little communication between all the persons all over the world. The work also decreased. All aspects of life may be uh, decreased. And to overcome this, we have to seek about certain works to compensate our loss. For example, in this situation, we have more more house time and th in this house time we can uh, read more we can communicate with our family more we can we can we can this is the uh, most important property for those person who are be positive they can create several works in the time of disaster. They can do a lot in the time where there is some problems prevent them from doing their routinely daily activities. I have heard from uh, those experts in life that the B positive person, even in a prison, even in a prison, they can do a lot. They can create several works in the limited place and limited time. For you and me, we have to be, uh, be positive. Regarding this presentation, we have several questions will be answered throughout the presentation. These questions, does any RH negative person exposed to antigen D develop anti-D antibodies? What is the benefit of a blood preserved by heparin? Can we use fresh frozen plasma to antagonize heparin? How we can treat heparin resistance? Transfusion of three units of O negative to another blood group like AB. Now, blood of his own blood group are available for further transfusion. What is your advice? Does the blood group compatibility for whole blood are similar to that for fresh frozen plasma, which forms of blood need blood group, RH, cross matching? Do you think any still role for whole blood transfusion? What's the benefit of removal of white BC? And how do you treat patient with hemophilia B? The answers for these questions will be found throughout this presentation. And at the end of the presentation, if any 
of this question not answer, please notice me. Types of blood transfusions. Till up about 10 to 15 years ago, there was single type of a blood transfusion, which is heterologous blood transfusion, which means the ordinary, usual blood transfusion, which is the transfusion of blood donated from person to another person. While the newly developed type of blood transfusion that increased in use and last about 10 to 15 years, it is autologous blood transfusion. And in this type of blood transfusion, the transfusion of patient own blood by one of the three methods that will be mentioned later in the next presentation, part two of this presentation. And the use of this autologous type of blood transfusion, the main purpose is to avoid sophisticated transmission of infection and transfusion reaction. I said sophisticated because it is not a CD complication that transmission of hepatitis B or hepatitis C or HIV virus or the transfusion reaction which sometimes can be fatal or with high morbidity. So it is very significant to avoid these two important categories of complications, avoid transmission of infection and avoid or decrease the transfusion reaction. These can be avoided by autologous blood transfusion, which is the transfusion of patients on blood, on blood. And we have three types of this type Trans, uh, type of a transfusion and we will talk about in details in next presentation in part two of this presentation. The International Society of Blood Transfusion recognizes the presence of multiple antigens on the surface of red blood cells that define blood group systems, means the blood group systems based on the presence of antigen on RBCs. But we have multiple, multiple antigens and accordingly we have multiple systems to classify the blood groups. These systems, as you see now here, we have the commonest non system, we call it ABO system, and here the RH system. We know these systems very well because we are daily working with this system. But in addition, we have several, several systems for blood grouping. These systems are minors and less significant, but should be considered in blood transfusion, like Lewis system, Duffy system, Kid system, Digo systems. And here the simple of system as an ABO, call it also ABO system. And here the number of the system, and here the number of antigens as we see in ABO, we have four antigens, while all of us know antigen A and B. There are another two antigens, so the total will be four antigens, but another two antigens with less significance. And regarding the RH system, all of you know the antigen D, while actually, this consists of about 47 antigens, 
but about 46 antigen less significant than the famous one, which is antigen D. And in the same manner, we can talk about other systems, which are less significant, but should be considered as we will see during the uh, compatibility test. The RBC antigens are of two types. First type, the antigen with naturally occurring antibody. That is to say, the antigen that have already in nature antibody. Yeah, no need for triggering to develop antibody. The antibody present in the nature, naturally occurring antibody. These are antigen A and B, and their presence or absence give rise to ABO groups. That is to say, when antigen A present, we call it blood group A. Antigen B present, we call it blood group B. Both of them are present, we call it AB group. If no antigen, neither A nor B, the absence of this antigen, we call it blood group O. These antigens with naturally occurring antibody, that is to say any person with antigen B has in its plasma anti-A, and any patient or person with Blood group B has in its plasma NTA. And those with blood group O have in their plasma NT, both NTA and NTB. And those persons with type blood type a, AB have no antibody. Why? Because they have both antigens. Antigen A and antigen B. Here, the blood group in ABO system, which are AB, AB, O, and as I just mentioned, blood group A has antigen A and has anti B. And this type of blood group can compatible to antigen A and antigen B. Those with a blood group O will be compatible to A, B, A, B, and O. Means the person with the blood group O can be transfused to all these types of blood group, while the person with blood group AB can be transfused only to person with blood group AB. And this is the ratio of the presence in the nature for this blood group. As you see, blood group A about 40, and the blood group O about 45, and the least one, blood group AB. Blood types in the US populations will, can be different from those whites and blacks. As we see here, blood group O about 45% in whites and 49% in blacks. While AB in the same ratio for both white and blacks. Another type of antigens, we talked about antigens with naturally occurring antibody, but we have another type of antigen which is naturally not 
have antibody but can have antibody after triggering. In the recess group, we have 47 antigens that make up the recess group. The most significant is antigen D that all of you know, this antigen. But we have another 46 antigens which are less significant. And I just said, unlike antigen A and B, the NTD antibody does not develop without exposure of a patient with D negative, that is to say antigen D negative, has no antigen blood to D positive RBCs. And when can this happen? Either during the blood transfusion, somebody with RH negative has been given RH positive blood. Or entrance of fetal blood into the maternal circulation. And in this situation when the fetal is of RH positive and the mother of RH negative. Patient with rhesus antigen are said to be RH positive. And those without, without this antigen said to be RH negative. About 60 to 70% of RH negative patients exposed to RH positive RBCs will develop MTD antibody. And this is very important to be known. And this is the answer for one of the questions in the introduction of this presentation, that not all the patient with RH negative when developed to, will, when exposed to RH positive blood will develop the uh, antibody. Just 60 to 70% of those exposed to RH positive will develop the antibody. And about 30 to 40% of those persons will not develop the antibody. And this means if we transfuse blood with RH positive again after a while, to the same person will not develop transfusion reaction in those person that not develop antibody to the RH positive. There is a latency period before the antibodies are synthesized. That is to say, when we transfuse uh, a blood of RH positive to RH negative persons, we need a time for the developing of antibody. So if we give another blood unit after one hour, two hours, 12 hours, there will be no reaction because the development of antibody need a time. This is called a latency period. After developing of antibody, there will be a reaction if we transfuse RH positive blood to RH negative persons. And uh, the distribution of a major type of blood group with the inclusion of RH negative and positive, we can categorize those group into this ratios and accordingly we we have none now that o blood group o about 45 percent total and from this 45 percent we have just seven percent with rh negative and 38 percent without rh positive 
I put here multiple stars in front of 7% wide to know that those persons with, our, with, with the blood group of O negative, very few in the nature. And according to this fact, we can talk a lot in the next slides about the transfusion of blood group O negative to several situation we can face. So please keep in your mind that RH negative group, RH negative group, about just 70% from all the blood group. As the blood transfusion is very important and can develop sophisticated blood transfusion reactions and sometimes of reactions with high morbidity and mortality. So we have to do compatibility test before any blood transfusion. And the compatibility test involve three separate procedures, three separate procedures involving both donor and recipient blood. These pro procedures are first one, ABO and RH blood typing of both the donor and recipient. In this step, we can just do a typing of the donor and recipient, that is to say, for example, type A, RH positive, to type A patient, RH also positive. And in the second procedure, we have the antibody screening for, of recipient serum, and in the third procedure, we do a donor and recipient to cross match. From all of these, we can we can know that we are in the theater. We send just for cross match, but actually, two steps before have been done in the bank, which are the ABO and RH typing for both, and antibody screening of recipient serum. ABO and RSAS type, which is the first step here. We will talk about each step or procedure in details. For this important step, most of fatal hemolytic transfusion reaction, I'm talking not about all transfusion reaction. I'm talking about fatal hemolytic transfusion reaction result from the transfusion of ABO incompatible blood, yani, which is rare to be happen. And if happen, this happened by a mistake. When blood group B given to patient with blood group A, or blood group A given to a patient with a blood group B. Does not happen unless by a mistake. But if happen, may be fatal. And it is most of fatal hemolytic transfusion reaction. The second procedure, antibody screen. In this procedure, there is a detection of unexposed clinically significant antibodies Again, is the minor blood group system antigens. So here we are not talking about ABO system. We are talking about other systems already mentioned in the maybe third slide of this presentation. I have said there are several systems less famous than ABO, 
but should be considered during the compatibility of a blood transfusion to again to avoid the transfusion reaction due to these systems and we call it here the minor blood group systems and in this procedure of compatibility we have we can screen the antibody against the minor blood group systems antigens also we can call it indirect Combs test or indirect antiglobulin test this can be positive that is to say when we perform this compatibility can be positive in between 0 to 8 percent of samples depending on the population the antibody screen can be performed by using commercially supply type o rbcs that mix and incubated with both donor and recipient serum to screen for the presence of unexpected antibodies. Unexpected antibodies because we expect anti-A in patient with the blood group B. We expect anti-B in patient with the blood group A. But here unexpected, unexpected antibodies. If the recipient plasma screen is positive, that is to say, there is agglutination, the antibody will be identified by other commercially RBCs, and appropriate antigen negative donor unit will be selected. If the patient has been transfused after the last antibody screening test, then the test should be repeated because there may be a triggering for new antibodies. The last procedure is a cross match that when we want to give the blood to any patient, we send for a cross match. In a cross match, the donor RBCs are mixed with the recipient serum. The test is performed in three phases and takes about 45 minutes. It consists of three phases. First one, the immediate phase. The second, the incubation phase. And the third, anti-globulin phase. In the immediate phase, the immediate phase serves primarily to ensure why we said ensure because in the first procedure the blood group and RH already have been known but here in the compatibility test the first phase which is immediate phase in the compatibility procedure the first phase which is immediate phase the purpose of this phase to ensure that there are no errors in the ABO typing. The test is performed by mixing donor RBCs and patient serum at room temperature for macroscopic agglutination. يعني هذا احنا نشوفه بعيننا ما نحتاج الى مجهر حتى نكتشفه اذا اكو agglutination or reaction the test take one to five minutes and detects abo incompatibility and those antibodies in the mnp and lewis systems how the li ahna nsammi bil aamiya nsammi tariqa al qasira tariqa al qasira in the cross match يعني بالحقيقة المقصود به هو the first step immediate phase of the all the 
compatibility test that takes one to five minutes only. The incubation phase. This is the second phase that involves incubation of the first phase reaction at 37 centigrade in albumin and or low ionic citrine salt solution. This aids the detection of incomplete antibodies, incomplete antibodies that are able to attach to specific antigen but are unable to cause agglutination in saline solution. So we haven't seen agglutination in the phase one, but in this phase, we can detect such type of agglutination. And this phase take about 30 to 45 minutes to, co to complete and the primary detect antibodies in the RH system. The last phase, antiglobulin phase. This is the third phase of cross match involved the addition of antiglobulin sera to the incubated test tube. This third phase is only performed on a blood yielding a positive antibody screen. We talked about antibody screen wear in the second procedure for the cross match. Second procedure. If positive, we will do the antiglobulin phase. Negative, no need for antiglobulin phase. And this requires 60 to 90 minutes. And with this addition, antibodies present in the serum become attached to antibody globulin on the RBCs causing agglutination. This phase identifies the most incomplete antibodies from all blood group systems including RH, KL, KID, and Duffy systems. So now, in the previously transfused patient or exposed during a pregnancy, only 1% will have an antibody other than anti-A, anti-B, and or anti-RH antibodies. Only 1% will have antibody other than the world famous non-antibodies. And many of these are non-reactive at physiologic temperature. Determining the ABO and RH status alone yields a probability that the transfusion will be compatible in 99.8% of the instances. That is to say, if you know the blood group and RH of both donor and recipient without any other procedures for cross match, just the ABO and RH the incidence, the incidence of transfusion reaction will be about 20 per 10,000. 20 per 10,000. يعني واحد يعني عشرة بالخمسة آلاف عشرة بالخمسة آلاف يصير عندهم transfusion reaction. إذا نطينا بلاد وإحنا ما نعرف بس الـ ABO والـ RH يعني واحد بيشنت A نيجاتيف A بوزيتيف جينا نطينا بلاد جروب A بوزيتيف بدون أي كروس ماتش نسبة الـ transfusion reaction just 20 per 
10,000. This risk increased, the risk increased about one person in a previously transfusion patient. That is to say this number, this number will be 98, 98.8. The addition of the negative antibody screen improved the compatibility to 99.94%. The addition of negative antibody screen, if, if we do antibody screen, and will the result is negative and give this blood, the, the risk will be decreased, will be decreased the risk from 20 per 10,000 to six per 10,000. And with a complete cross match, if we have done all the cross match, the risk is still a present but uh, about just five per 10,000, five per 10,000. And this is the importance of the cross match. The net result is to decrease, is to decrease the risk from 20 per 10,000 to five per 10,000. Now, emergent bleeding patient presented to the emergency department. What can we transfuse? I will see if can I do unmute for all without stop screening or not. Okay. Okay, Shabab. يا ريت اللي عنده جواب يجاوب. نعم ستار او نيجاتيف. للتايب ستار سبيسيفيك. اوكي على البدايه. او نيجاتيف. او نيجاتيف. هذا اللي قبل شوي حكينا عليه بالتايب. هيك. يعني يعتبر بارشال كروس مارك. هيك ماما. اللي هو بس يعتمد على الـ AVO ولا الـ RH. نعم. اوكي. هذا يعني النقطة الثانية انه يكون الـ Type Specific اللي عن الـ Cross Match. تمام؟ يعني Blood مثلا T2B يعني Without Cross Match. شلون نفس المثال اللي حكيت لنا حضرتك؟ يس. تمام؟ يس. ونقدر ننطي بعدها اللي هو الـ Type Specific إذا يعني اثنيناتهم يعني 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 اذا كانت مو موجوده بنقول يعني او بس انه تايب بارشال كروس ماتش والان كروس ماتش بريفيرابل للاو نيجاتيف اوكي ثانكس ثانكس بيفور بيفور انسرينج ذيس كويشن بيفور انسرينج ذيس كويشنز اند از اي جاست انيميوت اول اوف ماي فور يو any another question about the uh, previous slides of this presentation before answering this question? Good. Good. I will unmute the mic again. Okay. During emergency, that is to say an emergency, we uh, cannot have the uh, suitable blood in the short time. 
and long time sometimes needed before the preparation of the suitable blood group. And the patient risky and may develop more complications or dies in short time if we don't transfuse the blood. In this situation, the answers will be according to these priorities. Whenever I answer this question, the answer I usually hear is O negative. While I have just said that the O negative is very small ratio in between all types of blood, about 7%, about 7% from all types. So we have very good, not alternative actually, but based better than O negative. The first type or the first choice to give type specific, partially cross match blood. Type specific, if the patient is blood group A positive, I can give the patient A positive, partially cross match, which is only the first step or phase of a cross match that I have just said it lasts about five minutes. And if I can't tolerate these five minutes also, I can give just type specific and cross match blood, just type specific blood group A to a patient with blood group A positive, for example. And I just explain that this transfusion can give a safety of about 99.8 safety. With knowing of the blood group only, without any cross match, without any phase of a cross match, without even the first phase of a cross match. And if these two options, both of them not available, I'm obligated to give O negative packed RBCs. This can be limited to no more than two minutes in most instances. And once the patient's blood group has been determined, a switch to group specific blood should be made. Nurja, Nanti, the type specific blood. Why? Because O negative blood is relatively rare and it's a prevalent about seven to 8% of the Caucasian populations. This percent or ratio decreased to one in Asian population. And in general, about 5%. And O negative supply the patient circulation with NTA and NTB that may result in circulation. And if we have given, we have given large amount of O negative, in this situation, it is necessitated to further giving of O negative. That is to say, even after knowing the original blood group of the patient, which is maybe A, and there is a blood group A, and the cross match, we can't give the blood group A. Why? Because the patient has been given big amount of blood group O, blood group O, and in this situation, there will be big amount of antibodies, NTA and NTB, inside the blood of this patient, and if we give in this situation, blood group A or blood group B, there will be a transfusion reaction. So after, so after giving of about three units of blood group O, not return back to original blood, 
but continue to give blood group O, which is already small in amount and not available all the time. So there will be a problem of giving the blood of this patient in case of deficiency of the blood group O. To give the blood, we have to preserve the blood. And here we have three types of preservatives to give an anti-agulation, anti These are CPD, which is citrate phosphate dextrose, CPDA, citrate phosphate dextrose adenine, and we have also the heparin. The first one, which is old one, give a shelf life of RBC about 21 days, while the CPDA give a shelf life of RBC for about 35 days, which is most common used nowadays. And also we have a heparin that give a shelf life of RBC for just four hours then if just four hours, then why we preserve the blood with heparin? There will be only important one benefit we will talk about in the next slides. The benefit of a blood transfusion enhance oxygen carrying capacity. If we give the patient the fluid to maintain blood pressure, to maintain the volume, this maintenance will not enhance the oxygen carrying capacity, just maintain hemodynamic stability. Also, at the same time, the blood supports of cardiac output, improve the hemostasis with the blood component therapy because the blood contains uh, clotting factors, platelets, some forms of the blood. We will talk about in the details later. The previous slides about the benefit of the blood transfusion. Here the indications of blood transfusion, which are severe blood loss. I said severe because not each blood loss can be treated by giving blood transfusion following severe burn, because severe burn lead to RBC hemolysis, and the patient may need blood transfusion. During major surgery that associated with severe, severe blood loss. Anemic patients, severe anemic patient, not mild or moderate anemia. Thrombocytopenia, a situation where platelets number decreased. Bleeding due to clotting factor deficiency or dysfunction like hemophilia and patient with liver disease. We have several forms of blood to be transfused. These are whole blood, packed RBCs, Leuco reduced red blood cell, fresh frozen plasma, cryoprecipitate, platelet concentrate, clotting factor concentrate. These are several forms of blood, and for each situation, we have to choose the best option with less hazard for a blood transfusion. All these form none as a blood transfusion. When we give a patient a platelet concentrate, we call it a blood transfusion. When we give a hemophilic person, persons with the cryoprecipitate, we call it blood transfusion. When we give a person just Factor eight concentrate, we call it a blood transfusion. These are the natural forms of blood. 
can be transfused to several conditions need specific blood transfusion. The whole blood it stores in CPD or CPDA or heparin, whole blood. Now we are talking about whole blood without any separation, all the component of the blood. These form are stored in four centigrade. That is to say, can be stored in the refrigerator, not in the freezer, in the refrigerator, four centigrade. Blood preserved with heparin, which is, as I said in the previous slide, can give a shelf life of RBC for hours. Why we use it? We use it for certain specific complications, which is open heart surgery. Why? Because this type of preservative need no dilution with CPD or CPDA. When we preserve the blood with CPD or CPDA, this solution with high volume lead to dilution of the blood, while we need very small volume of heparin. There will be no dilution of original blood. Dose of heparin for anticoagulation is 0.5 to 2 unit per mil of the blood. For example, approximately 500 international units, which is about just 0.1 mil of heparin for 500 mil of the blood. This blood that preserved by heparin should be given within four hours because after the four hours, there will be clotting and agglutination of the blood. Fresh whole blood is stored in CPD or CPDA used within 24 hours. Why within 24 hours? Because this is a fresh whole blood, not whole blood that is banked in the bank. This is a fresh, fresh, fresh whole blood. Should be used within 24 hours. After the 24 hours, we will lose the platelet. With more time, we will lose most of the clotting factors. The indications of fresh whole blood is the thrombocytopenia and exchange transfusion of a newborn. Nowadays, no need to give a fresh whole blood for a thrombocytopenia. We can give just platelet concentrate. But for any reason, if the patient needs a platelet due to thrombocytopenia, and we want to give whole blood, should be fresh whole blood. And exchange transfusion of newborn, most of you have, been, have seen this transfusion in patient with jaundice, for example, jaundice patient, and that need a blood exchange. Should be done with the fresh whole blood. Why? Because the fresh whole blood contain platelet and the clotting factor. Red blood cell only. We can get packed RBCs after the centrifugation of the whole blood and take, separate the RBCs from the plasma. The total volume about 300 ml, and the shelf life about 42 days, and the storage temperature about four centigrade. We have to add solution for RBCs. We call it additive solution. With the additive solution preparation, the original preservative and most of the plasma is removed and replaced with 100 ml of additive solution. This 
packed RBC has a criteria of the hematocrit about 60%, which is more than usual. Less citrate per unit. 75 to 80% fewer microaggregates. Longer shelf life, about 42 days. Blood is able to regenerate to 3 DPG more rapidly. And you know that 2, 3 DPG enhance, enhance the giving of oxygen, release of oxygen from hemoglobin to the tissue. And without the 2, 3 DPG, after the transfusion, after blood transfusion, when there is no or few little 2, 3 DPG, there will be less enhancement of releasing of oxygen to the tissue. With backed RBC, the 2,3 DPG regeneration more rapid than that with whole blood. And here a comparison between whole blood and packed RBC. The volume of packed RBC less than whole blood. 300 opposite to 500. The ESR the same, erythrocyte mass the same. Hematocrit more with packed RBC, 70 in comparison to 40. Albumin, globulin, total protein, all these less impact RBC, so the transfusion reaction will be less. And plasma sodium, plasma potassium, plasma acid, all these will be less. So the metabolic disorders will be less. Electrolyte and acid-based disturbances will be less with packed RBC. The preparation of RBC, saline washed RBCs may be used for patients that experience reactions to foreign proteins. White cells can be removed by washing, radiation, and glucofiltration. These are additional procedures can be done for RBCs. For more benefit, we will talk about when we want to remove white blood cell, we can do washing, radiation, or leukofiltration. And when we don't want the blood to, be, to, to have foreign proteins, we can use saline washed RBCs. Why? To decrease the reactions, blood transfusion reactions due to proteins. One unit of RBCs will increase the hemoglobin and hematocrit of a 70 kilogram adult by approximately one gram per deciliter for hemoglobin and 3% for hematocrit. So when we have a person with hemoglobin seven, and we want to raise this hemoglobin to 10, we have to give three units of RBCs to raise the hemoglobin from seven to 10. American Society of Anesthetist Task Force Guidelines for giving the blood. We have a guidelines for giving the blood. RBCs should usually be administered when the hemoglobin concentration is low. To which extent low? Less than six gram per deciliter in young persons and healthy without important diseases. 
and the blood loss is acute, not a chronic. Transfusion is usually unnecessary when the hemoglobin is greater than 10 gram. So when the hemoglobin less than six, we have to give the blood. Hemoglobin more than 10, no blood transfusion. What about the hemoglobin level between six and 10? From six to 10, give the blood or not to give the blood? The answer for this question, the determination of whether intermediate levels of hemoglobin between six to 10 justify or require RBCs should be based on any ongoing indication of following. Organ ischemia. When the patient has organ ischemia and his blood level between six and 10, we have to give blood. Potential or ongoing bleeding. We have to give the blood. Patients intravascular volume status, shocked patient, for example. We have to give the blood when hemoglobin above six, seven, eight, nine. The giving of this blood for another reason, for one of these reasons. While if healthy person and the blood group six, seven, no need for giving blood. The patient's risk factor for complications of inadequate oxygenation. For example, asthmatic patient, abnormal hemoglobin type, patient with heart failure, patient with ischemic heart disease, The need for oxygen per minutes, our body need 250 ml per minute only. And we have to know that this is for a 70 kilogram adult person. We need 250 ml of oxygen and this justify why i have just said when the patient has a hemoglobin level of more than six for example six six point five and he's healthy no need for a blood transfusion unless there is another reason why because this level of hemoglobin can ensure the giving of 20, 250 ml of oxygen per minute. The theoretical maximum oxygen carrying capacity is 1.39 ml of oxygen for each gram hemoglobin but direct measurement gives a capacity of 1.34 ml oxygen for a gram of hemoglobin. So 1.34 is also known as Hanfernal's constant, and the oxygen content of a blood is the volume of oxygen carried in each 100 ml of a blood. And this can be calculated according to this equation. We can calculate. And I just give this slide for you for the revision of your lecture in cardiovascular and respiratory physiology. Here, the arterial content of O2 and here the venous content of O2, which is about 15 ml per 100 ml of blood. And here 
in artery of 20 mm. With the addition or multiplying by the volume cardiac output per minute, this we can calculate and get the auto delivery, which is about 1,000 mL per minute. And the return, auto return, about 750 mL. So the difference of 250 mL is the auto extraction that consumed by our body. This is the need of our body per minute. And this is the also named as oxygen uptake. Oxygen uptake, which is equal to oxygen delivery minus the oxygen return. The condition that may lead to more blood transfusion, that is to say, the condition that necessitate the giving of blood in the persons whom blood hemoglobin between six and 10. These are Patient with impaired oxygenation, like those with pulmonary diseases or at high altitude, or those patients with increased oxygen demand, hyperthermia, hyperthyroidism, sepsis, pregnancy, or those with limited ability to increase cardiac output, like those with coronary artery disease, myocardial dysfunction, on beta adrenergic blockade, inability to distribute cardiac output, or those with decreased systemic vascular resistance, or those with occlusive vascular disease, or those with less shift of oxygen hemoglobin curve. Less shift means that the delivery or the release of oxygen from hemoglobin more difficult. And this can happen in certain situations. One of these situations is the uh, decrease to 3 DPG, which can occur after giving the over blood transfusion because 2,3-DPG need time to be regenerated. In patients with abnormal hemoglobins, like the presence of recently transfused hemoglobin, decreased 2,3-DPG, hemoglobin S, acute anemia, and in patients with ongoing or imminent blood loss, traumatic surgical bleeding, placenta previa acrite or apropsio, uterine atony, or patient with clinical coagulopathy. Now we will talk about fresh frozen plasma. How can we get fresh frozen plasma? This form of the blood can be got after the separation from RBC. And this separation is immediately. So we call it a fresh. We can use this type form of blood after several months. So the word the fresh does not mean that to be given after gaining from the donor directly. But the fresh means immediate separation from RBC. Can be stored for several months, up to one year. It is about 200 
to 250 mm and the storage temperature minus 20 to minus 30. So it is a freezed form of blood and before using should be thawed in a water bath to 30 to 37 centigrade stored in about four centigrade and to be used within 24 hours. Fresh flows and plasma separated from RBC's component of whole blood by centrifugation. It contains all the plasma proteins, particularly factors five and eight. It also contains the preservative added at the time of collections, which is either CPD or CPDA. The fresh frozen plasma must be ABO compatible, but RH plasma can be given to RH, RH positive, can be given to RH negative recipient, but should be avoided in young female because of the possibility of immunization to the RH antigens. Better not to use other than the patient's blood group unless there is deficiency, as practically in Iraq is done. In Iraq, you can use the blood group and the RH. And the compatibility here is different from the compatibility of whole blood. Why? Because in fresh frozen plasma, we have no antigen. We have just antibody. So the AB, AB can be given to all the types of blood group patients. Just like O in the packed RBCs and whole blood. Here, here, the AB takes the position of O blood group. So here, AB can be given to all the types of blood group. So A can take blood from A and AB. B from B and AB, and AB from AB only, O from O. When we give the blood to blood group O, we have to give it from O only. While when we give fresh frozen plasma, we can give all the types of a blood group to a patient with the blood group O. And here the comparison between the packed RBC and the fresh frozen plasma for blood group A, packed RBC, we can give A and O. Fresh frozen plasma, A and A. For O, in a blood group, when we're giving packed RBC, we can give only O. Fresh frozen plasma, we can give all the time. American Society of Anesthetics Task Force Guidelines. For urgent reversal of warfarin therapy, patient presented on warfarin and this patient, an emergency situation to be operated on, we can reverse warfarin. The reversal done by fresh frozen plasma in a dose of five to eight mil per kg. Please keep this number in your mind because in post-call meeting when I meet the students, most of them afraid from the effect of warfarin and gives more 
fresh plasma more amount the more amount can trigger thrombosis especially when there is a risk of DIC or when the patient already has a risk for DVT you know that this patient was on warfarin so this patient at risk we want to reverse the warfarin but we don't want to increase the risk of the purpose already giving warfarin. So five to eight mil per kg. For 70 kilogram, just 350 to 700 is enough. Means one to two units of a fresh frozen plasma enough to reverse the warfarin. For correction of non-coagulation factor deficiencies for which specific correlates are unavailable, for example, patient with patient with thrombocytopenia, uh, hemophilia, factor A deficiency, and we have no specific factor A concentrate. We have no cryoprecipitate. So we can use what? We can use fresh frozen plasma. For correction of microvascular bleeding in the presence of an increased more than 1.5 times normal prothrombin time or partial thromboplastin time. Fresh frozen plasma should be given in doses calculated to achieve a minimum of 30% of a plasma factor concentration. So our goal to achieve 30% of a plasma factor concentration, which is usually achieved with 10 to 15 mL per kg of fresh frozen plasma. For correction of microvascular bleeding secondary to coagulation factor deficiency in patient transfused with more than one blood volume. That is to say in patient with massive blood transfusion. When the PT and PTT cannot be obtained in timely fashion. In this situation, we have, we have given massive blood transfusion for a patient and we cannot do a test for PT or PTT for any reason. So in this situation, we can ex expect a deficiency of a clotting factor and we can give fresh frozen plasma. For cases of antithrombin 3 deficiency, for the treatment of immune deficiency, for the treatment of the thrombotic thrombocytopenia perbara. Fresh frozen plasma is contraindicated for augmentation of plasma volume or albumin concentrate. Anyone can answer me. You can unmute your laptops or mobile. Anyone can answer me why fresh frozen plasma is contraindicated for augmentation of the plasma volume or albumin concentration? Risk for reaction. Risk for reaction. Risk for reaction. Very good, very good. You mean that if we use fresh frozen plasma just for plasma volume augmentation, there will be a risk for transfusion reaction, a risk for transmission of infection. So there is a risk of hazardous complications. And in this situation, there is no justification of used fresh frozen plasma unless other types of 
plasma volume augmentation failed to maintain the plasma volume. Only in this situation, we can use we can use blood or blood mainly, and sometimes with the blood, we may need fresh frozen plasma. Do you recommend the prophylactic of fresh frozen plasma in a massive blood transfusion? I mean, scientifically speaking. Only in case of coagulation defect. Only in? Cases of coagulation defect can be recommended for prophylactic fresh frozen plasma. Uh, I'm saying prophylactic. Prophylactic. So according to investigation? Yeah, according to investigation, this is the important role of management. This is not a prophylactic. But the use of a prophylactic is, is not recommended unless, unless when there is no poor facilities, no chance for testing clotting factor, PT or PTT. Only in these situations, we can give fresh frozen plasma prophylactically. Can we use fresh frozen plasma to antagonize heparin? We have just said that fresh frozen plasma used to antagonize warfarin. Can be used to antagonize heparin? Cannot. Cannot. Augment, augmentation effect of heparin. Yeah, and this is the answer for the second question. How we can treat heparin resistance when we want give heparin to a, pers a patient and the heparin does not work, the reason may be antithrombin 3 deficiency and the giving of fresh frozen plasma may enhance the uh, work of heparin and can solve the problem of heparin resistance. This is the answer for question one. And this is the answer for question two. Now we are talking about the cryoprecipitate. It is why it's called insoluble precipitate. Results from thawing of unit of fresh frozen plasma at four centigrade. To summarize, there was one unit of whole blood after centrifugation, we get packed RBC unit and the fresh frozen plasma unit. And here, 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 we get one unit of a cryoprecipitate from from what? From timing of fresh frozen plasma. So the cryoprecipitate can be got from the unit of a fresh frozen plasma. It is just 10 ml and contains 80 to 145 units of clotting factor number eight, about 250 milligram fibrinogen, factor 13 and bone will brand factor. These are the important Content of one unit of cryoprecipitate, which is 10 ml. 10 ml. Okay? A unit of a cryo contains only 40 to 50% of the coagulation factors found in a unit of a fresh frozen plasma. But those factors are more concentrated in a cryo, means less volume. So, one unit of fresh frozen plasma contains more factor eight, more fibrinogen, more volvular brand factor. But why we are interested to get cryoprecipitate? Because the cryoprecipitate actually with less volume, just 10 ml, so we can 
give for patient with, for example, hemophilia. I don't want to give the patient with hemophilia more volume of a fresh frozen plasma. He is not in a case of hypovolemia. He is in a case of factor eight deficiency. So I want to give just factor eight. So this is better to be given with less volume of 10 ml rather than giving with more volume of a fresh frozen plasma of about 300 ml. So the benefit of a cryoprecipitate to be less volume. Actually, it is with less concentration of different clotting factors. You have to know and keep that in your minds. It is concentrated source of factor eight, 13, von Willebrand and fibrinogen. One unit of a cryoprecipitate, which is the yield from one unit of fresh frozen plasma contains sufficient fibrinogen to increase fibrinogen level five to seven milligram per deciliter. ABO compatibility is not essential because of the limited antibody content of the associated plasma vehicle, 10 to 20 ml, particularly in Iraq, practically in Iraq is done. يعني بالعراق يسووها IBO incompatibility, uh, IBO cross match. Viruses can be transmitted with a cryoprecipitate. The indications of a cryoprecipitate, the treatment of factor A deficiency, hemophilia A, fibrinogen deficiency, factor seven, and 13 deficiency, von Willebrand disease. And for von Willebrand disease, we can treat with fresh frozen plasma if the patient not responded to desmopressin. Platelet concentrate, the platelets are separated from the plasma by centrifugation. Platelets are supplied either as a single donor unit or as a combination of multiple donors. يعني المريض من يحتاج بليتلت نقول يراد له six units. يجيبون له six units. High six units of combination of multiple donors. يعني جاي من ست أشخاص. بس أكو طريقة ثانية تستخدم اللي هي single donor. In a single donor unit is derived from one whole blood unit. And it is called six pack of platelets. Can be obtained by apheresis from single donor at one time. It's equivalent to five to eight units in about two to 400 ml volume. فهسه السؤال اللي نسأله احنا قلنا المالتيبل دونر مالتيبل دونر يعني اذا ردنا 6 units of platelet جايتنا من 6 persons ليش مو هاي من 6 persons لانه كل واحد من عدها جاي من single whole blood and after separation we got this unit of platelets. How can we take these five to eight units from single donor without hypovolemia? Anyone can answer me? So how Good. So in this situation, in this situation, there is no decrease in blood volume. I mean, no significant decrease because the machine just take blood, separate platelets from other component and return back to the same person without without significant 
hypovolemia. The platelets ordinary classic unit contain 50 to 70 ml. Platelet viability is optimal at 22 centigrade. لذلك ما يخلوها لازم بالثلاجة. Storage is limited to four to five days. One unit of platelets will increase the platelet count of 70 kilogram adult by five to 10,000 per millimeter cubed. Platelets have both the ABO and HALA antigens. ABO compatibility is ideal but not required, not required. Incompatibility will shorten the lifespan of the platelet. Practically in Iraq, transfuse the same blood group unless there is deficiency of platelets. ASA task force recommendations. Prophylactic platelet transfusion is ineffective and rarely indicated when thrombocytopenia is due to increase the platelet destructions as in idiopathic thrombocytopenia. Because the platelets in continuous destructions, so the prophylactic giving of platelet lead to more platelet destruction. Prophylactic platelets transfusion is rarely indicated in surgical patient with thrombocytopenia due to decrease the platelet production when the platelet count is more than 100,000 and is usually indicated if the count less than 50,000. Vaginal deliveries or operative procedures ordinarily associated with relatively insignificant blood loss may be undertaken in patients with a platelet count less than 50,000. Platelet transfusion may be indicated despite an apparently adequate platelet count if there is non-platelet dysfunction and microvascular bleeding. In this situation, the platelet count is normal, but actually these platelets in abnormal function, they are not functioning well. So we call it platelet dysfunction. Although the platelet count is normal, but this patient need platelet transfusion. Do you recommend the prophylactic platelet concentration in massive blood transfusion? Any answer? Doctor, نفس الفكرة مالنا. نعتمد همين على ال على count مالتها. نفس الشيء. يعني ما قدرنا نحسب بال count مالت. صحيح. يعني نفس الشيء فوزين. فما قدرنا نحسب نحسب بال count فاحنا نطيب يعني هو فلكتيك. لأن بعد الأربعة إلى خمسة يوم حتى dilutional thrombocytopenia تبتعد عنها. صحيح. نعتمد على ال count but if the count not available we can use it prophylactical. Clotting factor concentrate for example factor 8 concentrate to summarize we have one unit of whole blood we take from this one unit one packed R one unit of packed RBC and one unit of fresh frozen plasma. And from fresh frozen plasma, we get one of cryoprecipitate. And from this cryoprecipitate, or from fresh frozen plasma, we can get only the factor eight concentrate. Why? To decrease the compli possible complications and to prevent the giving of not needed component of the blood. So in this form, we can give the patient only the specific deficiency factor, like the factor eight concentrate. How much factor eight concentrate 
need to be given for a patient with hemophilia. We have to know that the half-life of factor VIII is six to 10 hours. Minimal concentration for hemostasis during major surgery, 30 to 40 percent. And we have to know the fact that one unit per kg increase the level and the ratio of this factor about 2%. So if it is now 10% for certain patient, and our target to increase it to 30, 40%, from 10 to 40. So the deficiency is 40 minus 10 equal to 30. And for a 70 kilogram patient, the need will be 15 units per kg. Why 15? Because one unit increases 2%. We want the deficiency 30%. So 15 units per kg will raise the, per, the ratio from 10 to 40%. So 15 units per, multiplied by 70 will be equal to about 1,000. So the need now is 1,000 unit of factor eight. How can we get this 1,000? We can get it from fresh frozen plasma, from cryoprecipitate, from factor eight. If we get it from fresh frozen plasma, we know that one unit of fresh frozen plasma contain about 20, uh, 225. So we will need five units. And can you imagine that these five units, if the units of 300 ml, 300 ml, we have to give this patient 1.5 liter. Although he is normal volumic patient, this patient need only factor eight. And if we give the patient a cryo, the cryo, 10 ml of a cryo, contain 50 to 100 units. So we have to give 10 to 20 units of a cryo, which is about 100 to 200 ml of a cryo. And if we give factor eight concentrate, this factor eight present in 40 units per one mil, 40 units. So we need about 46 mil to give the patient 1,000 of unit of factor eight. There are specialized blood product for the situations in which cells or substances in the unit need to be re reduced or removed. This is a special situations. Washed RBCs. A unit of packed RBCs is washed to reduce plasma protein. Why? To decrease transfusion reaction. This reduces the risk for allergic transfusion reactions. Washing reduces immunoglobulins such as anti-immunoglobulin A that could cause anaphylactic transfusion reaction in person with selective immunoglobulin A deficiency. Another maneuver, leukocyte reduction. Red blood cell and the platelet units may be filtered to remove most of the leukocytes, white blood cells. This may reduce the risk for febrile transfusion reactions, may help prevent alloimmunization to MHC, HALA, donor antigens, help reduce the risk for cytomegalovirus infection. Leukoreduction red blood cell is done by leukofiltration or leukocyte depletion by following methods. Centrifugation and buffy coat removal, washed red blood cell concentrate, frozen deglycerolized red cells. 
irradiated blood, irradiation is needed to destroy all living leukocytes, particularly lymphocytes that could cause transfusion-associated graft versus host disease. Questions. Which form of blood need a blood group RH cross match? The question here, I summarize from my, my presentation. You will find the answer in the slides before, but I summarize these slides here. This is for fresh frozen, for cryo, for platelets, and this is what practically done in Iraq. Do you think any still role of whole blood transfusion? Anyone can answer? No, no, no. Our best would pack RBC. Yes. Pack RBC, then the volume of the protein of الرياكشن يكون اقل وهي مسكرتها اعلى بالاضافه الى يعني الالكترولايت يكون باقل يعني الستورج ديت يعني اكثر من الهول بلاد اوكي سبوز سبوز اف اول اوف يو كان هير مي سبوز ذات بيشنت سيرتن بيشنت نيد نيد باكت ار بي سي بليتلت اند فريش فروزن بلازما اول اوف ذيم all of them. What do you recommend? Giving all of them or giving whole blood? Whole blood. Yeah. Who, who, who said whole the whole who, who said whole blood? Can you justify? No, I'm saying whole blood, for example, hypovolemic shock or acute loss, acute blood loss. Uh, such like this patient, I think you need whole blood. But the whole blood cannot give you clotting factor, cannot give you uh, platelets. Yes, uh, I'm just talking about hypovolemia. Even in hypovolemia, even in hypovolemia, even in hypovolemia, my question was, if the patient needs a platelet, need a clotting factor, and uh, RBCs. Okay. So, fresh blood. Do you think that fresh blood is available? No, Available. Right? No. So, so nowadays, no role of whole blood transfusion, even if the patient needs all the component of a blood. The benefit of removal of white BC, we already answered this. How do you treat hemophilia B? Already answered. And thank you very much. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you, sir. Doctor, if we have an emergency a patient with severe bleeding and we give him O negative blood transfusion, more than two to three units, and then uh, he need another uh, blood transfusion and give another O negative. His original blood group. What is uh, the time? Uh, that original blood group. We stay until antibody formation. Yes. This is the duration. The duration. How long? Okay. Clear. Clear. Can I answer? Okay. Can 
كان انميوت يور مايك بليز كان يو انميوت يور يور مايك بليز because I'm unable to unmute all. I don't know why. Okay. Okay. If, if we give a patient, if we give a patient uh, more than two units of O negative, we have to continue with O negative. And uh, the question of your colleague for how long? This depends on the. Uh, this the amount of the, the, the uh, plasma of the patient. And uh, roughly speaking, this can take about one month. And after one month, uh, you can give the patient his or her own blood. Thank you, Doctor. that we need all the blood components in the situations that we need all the blood components it cannot be given by the stored the blood because the stored the blood no platelet function has no clotting factor. in case we need all the blood components we have to give all the blood plus the flush frozen plasma plus the plate so there will be no benefit from the whole blood. This is number one. And number two. Shabab, unmute your, your mic at the same point. Yes, so mute. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Okay. راح اجاوب على هذا السؤال. النقطة الثانية إذا احنا نطينا هول بلاد راح نطي فريش فروزن بلازما وراح نطي بليتلت كونتريت. في نو بنفيت فروم ذيس هول بلاد. إذا واحد من عندكم يقول يلا هسه نو بنفيت خلينا نطي ماكو ريسك لا اكو اكو ريسك أولا وثانيا وهو المور امبورتنت يعني احنا كل وان هول بلاد كل وان هول بلاد يخسرنا وان فريش فروزن بلازما ويخسرنا وان بليتلت كونسنتريت احد منكم يقدر يفسر كلامي كل وان يونت اوف هول بلاد يخسرنا وان يونت اوف فريش فروزن بلازما يخسرنا وان يونت اوف بليتلت كونسنتريت من يجاوب دكتور عفوا يا ريت بس السؤال ما فهمنا زين لان اكو صدى صوت كلش قوي من المايكات المفتوحه. اي انا ما دا اقدر اسوي انا ميوت فور اول ما اعرف ليش كنت اقدر بس هسه ما دا اقدر. فالسؤال انه سالته 
لذلك طلبت اكثر من مره منكم تسوون ان ميوت السؤال اللي سالته هو كل 1 يونت اوف هول بلاد تخسرنا 1 يونت اوف فريش فروزن بلازما تخسرنا 1 يونت اوف بليتلت كونسنتريت شلون؟ دكتور هو نفس ال1 يونت مال هول بلاد نقدر من البدايه نسوي له سيبريشن فريش فروزن بلازما وبليتلت واحد فيري جود هو هذا الجواب فاذا احنا ما سوينا بالبدايه وجينا وردنا ننطي للمريء ننطي للمريء في حاله احنا خسرنا 1 يونت اوف فريش فروزن بلازما و1 يونت اوف ديت نت كونسنتريت فلذلك نو رول اوف هول بلاد You have uh, another question? Other questions or comments? Okay, if Marco, if Marco, you're right, it's an hour after the end of the day. Just if Marco, are you coming to the hotel? And now, Diamond is bringing mics, had to sit down. تعرف أن هذا برنامج اليوم جديدين عليه فمرات ما أعرف ليه مثلا ما أقدر أسوي عن نيوت فور فور بس ديورنج باور بوينت برزنتيشن أقدر في هيك حالة إذا يجي صدع بعدكم ما راح تسمعون ما راح تستفيدون هاي النقطة الأولى النقطة الثانية إذا واحد منكم سجل هاي المحاضرة يا ريت يجز إياها حتى أختار يعني ادزها للطلبه هي لو الان سجلتها اشوف ياه الاحسن سؤال ثانك يو فيري ماتش اند جود باي شكرا للاستاذ عشتي شكرا شكرا شكرا